compliance with the open public meetings law. The motion is taken on November the 3rd, 2017. The notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press. The Ocean City sent a ledger to the Herald Times and followed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV Channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement made a part of this meeting. I would ask all to rise for the salute of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice. Please. Here. 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 Present. Here. Here. Mr. Barr is not here this evening. Unfortunately, his father is not doing so well, so he's uh, attending to him. So we wish him well. Uh, would someone like to make approval of the minutes, both from the regular session, October 23rd? And also the closed session minutes of that meeting. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of this meeting. Second. Are there any corrections, deletions, omissions that anyone's aware of? Any none. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Coggins? Abstain. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Yes. Scott, do you have any for us this evening? Yes, the evening, Mayor, a few things. Uh, first, I wanted to bring the committee's attention that uh, the committee and uh, Corson and I attended a meeting this morning uh, over at the City Police Department. The purpose of this meeting was, uh, was part of our quarterly communications uh, uh, committee that we had in the Upper Township in Ocean City and relative to issues concerning dispatch. Uh, for uh, which, as you know, Ocean City uh, dispatches for our uh, emergency services fire EMS. Um, and we also had a meeting uh, for the first time, which was our New Jersey uh, State Police Communications Unit. Two individuals, Lieutenant Anthony Gray uh, and also Sergeant First Class Ray Bradley, uh, and also uh, uh, Bill King Jr. and Sr. Uh, from the Bell Plain Communication Center. And the purpose, in addition to it being our quarterly meeting, um, we wanted to uh, follow up on a few incidents that have happened over the past several months um, regarding a few dispatches that we've had um, where uh, we want to emphasize um, the importance, uh, both from a public perspective, uh, on um, ensuring that when you call a point of emergency, uh, to any dispatch center, whether it be Ocean City for the Southern Township residents, uh, or the New Jersey State Police, uh, or Bell Plain, uh, that you make sure you advise them of what municipality that you live in. Um, uh, we've had some issues, as you know, uh, members of the committee in the past, uh, relative to uh, our zip code uh, concerns, um, and, and sometimes uh, computer systems, um, they'll take a zip code and Ocean View, when in fact it actually is the Seaville, uh, or it should show Woodbine as opposed to Tucker. Um, and I can say some other examples too. Uh, but again, the purpose of this was to um, come together in a joint fashion between all of our uh, disciplines and agencies to discuss this, to make sure that our dispatchers um, glean that proper information from the caller. Uh, and uh, make sure that the proper information goes back uh, to the proper agency that has to service that particular area of the uh, So I um, uh, think we, we collectively come together and, and acknowledge um, some of the areas that where we can show improvement, um, and we'll be moving forward uh, to do that in the future. And we will include these other agencies in our future quarterly meetings. Um, the uh, follow-up meeting right after that, also with uh, myself and, and uh, the community of Corson, um, we also met with the New Jersey State Police um, regarding recent incidents that have occurred over on Stratton Beach. Um, and that is four-wheel driving um, on our beach. Um, and uh, I know there were some incidents where uh, that we had some fires that were burnt there. 
Um, and they're going to work with us uh, to not only to look into those situations, increase patrols in that area, but also during the summer months where there's more activity as far as traffic control, um, and they're going to be addressing those situations as well during the Commonwealth. Commonwealth. Uh, and they're going to work with us in the future. Uh, with our new lieutenant that's in charge of the Woodline Barracks, Lieutenant Shane, um, and his, uh, his assistant barracks commander, uh, uh, Sergeant First Class Steve uh, Devlin. Um, I have every confidence that those issues are, are uh, going to be few and far between. So, so the ATV incidents that have been occurring in Stratton, are they, and, and they're I'm not 100% up to where some of these people are coming from, but from what I understand, they are people that have um, four-wheel drive passes already. For Stratton or Sea Isle. Right, and they're driving down Well Beach to the Stratton there. And they're making it approximately two miles out of Sea Isle, and they're not they're telling the troopers they're still in Sea Isle. Is it, we need to define our weekend related, or is it any day? Uh, from what we found, it, it seems to be at any, you know, any different times, uh, any number of different we, times. We're going to take some measures to define our property, mine, the township border, on the beach for the sun. And we pretty much have to take the to take it and tell anybody it's there. And we are working on that myself and Paul um, for that proper sign. And so it's very clear uh, that that type of uh, four wheel drive or any type of drive on the beach. And our gates are closed. They've been closed for a while. And actually, if it's in the best interest of public safety, if they were making clothes all the time. When the lifeguards go on the beach, they open the gate and go on the beach. When they get off the beach, they close the gate. The gate should not be open at all during the day. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really think the issue was during the summertime. I think well, was. the issue could be during the summertime. Uh, We've had plenty of situations in the news where uh, terrorists have used vehicles and, and run them in a crowd. We do not need somebody running the beach, vehicle down the beach. Um, and without stealing uh, committee even uh, uh, Young's uh, thunder, because I know he's going to address this, um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, Roy Schoen and the Public Works uh, staff the outstanding job that they did for the fall festival, and that was in the week leading up to uh, preparing the man's field uh, and for the day of all the additional work that they put into uh, making sure that the facilities were clean, uh, restrooms were maintained properly, and all the additional assistance they gave with traffic control and, and whatnot. Um, and the only other update, and I know Paul's going to follow up on this later on, uh, is uh, we got a tentative date of November 21st uh, to start receiving equipment from uh, Ansaro regarding our new voice over at the uh, telephone system. Um, so equipment will, will tentatively be installed on that date and training will be forthcoming at the same time. That's it. Joanne. Now, is the rest, we're, we're close to mine, right? No, we're open. <coughs> Daniel. I think at this time, we'll do a contract negotiation at a full session. Okay. Paul. Thank you. Um, I just want to let you know that the uh, patroller started uh, installing some cheap housing today over at Buster Avenue in Japanese, so that project is officially underway with the uh, work being uh, completed today and you know, it anticipates probably a couple weeks to have the work done and then I'll continue to work with uh, public works on you know getting ready for the rest of the park improvements as that project finishes up. Um, just also to the, uh, the resolution that we sent out to the DOT regarding the uh, new uh, stuff, you know, turn on red at Route 50 and County Route 610 has already reached uh, the traffic engineer. He reached out to me just to uh, get a little more background information. And he's going to be starting his review of that intersection uh, over the next week or two. So that was pretty fast moving up to the chain of command to get that uh, project in as well. Well, you know, 
you know what? A, a couple of residents have reached out to me and said that if we go with uh, a no right on red or no turn on red, uh, that 610 has a prolonged light a little bit longer than what it is now because it will definitely get back up. They said at least on you know heading towards Dennis and and, the, and that area, um, and they suggested that the light be adjusted if in fact it, it's approved uh, to allow for traffic to move uh, a little longer on 610. And, and I guess also that email also regarding that. So I did let him know that that was a concern that if they do look at making a right turn, no turn on red from, you know, I guess the eastbound direction, if you're heading eastbound from Dennisville towards Petersburg, uh, and you know, that, that turning movement there would end up stacking up a little bit. So he's, gonna, he's aware of that, 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 that potential issue, especially in the morning. Um, and then the last thing I had was this call from what Scott said uh, on November 21st we're going to be switching over our phone service uh, to a different vendor so there, there could be some uh, minor um, outages or a sporadic uh, call uh, as we switch over from one phone vendor to the other phone vendor. Um, but I've been told that you know, they'll have a blue system set up ahead of that, that time so you may not get the initial call but we'll at least have route to voicemail and then you'll be able to get those messages uh, later in that day. Okay. That's all I have to thank you. Barbara, welcome back from your vacation. Thank you. I would think so. It's your first day back, right? Okay. The Coggins. Well, I'd just like to uh, congratulate Hobie Young and the uh, Department of Roads our emergency management providers, our administrative people in the City Hall who really made an extraordinary effort <clears throat> to make this uh, Fleming's Pumpkin Run event a tremendous success. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet a number of people over the course of the day who had been to prior pumpkin runs and uh, frankly they had nothing but uh, absolute uh, praise for what was going on. The park itself was beautiful. It was uh, maintained in a pristine condition. I mean, it looked totally top-notch in A1, and the uh, whole event put a uh, just a tremendous positive light on this township and what goes on here. But, uh, but most of all, Hobie, you uh, put your heart and soul into this, and it certainly paid off. He talked to a lot of people that put him on a six-seat golf cart and had him deliver people to their back. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for your know, comments. And that goes to the clerk's office. Um, Absolutely. Unbelievable job from there. So. Courtesy of anything before we turn it over to Mr. Young. <laughs> <laughs> Until we get the bottom line. Yeah, I, I want to echo John's comments. It was a beautiful event, and if anybody didn't enjoy it, they obviously weren't there. I don't, I, I don't know anybody who was there that was um, Just one thing I, I have had myself in the last week and a half, I've had two encounters from day, in the daytime with raccoons. Um, if there's a problem with raccoons, they're sick. Everybody, I call some people to please be careful. If you have your pets, keep them on a leash. Notify animal control, the health department. I, actually, the health department's a waste of time. They didn't let them out. Um, now, are they, are they baiting for I, rabies? I, I don't know what's going on in my account. Two sick raccoons, both of them were about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Both of them were staggering like they were drunk. Uh, I called the health department. They were not interested in doing rabies research or anything like The other one out of control was involved in and I don't know what the total outcome was about. But. All right, well, we need to make sure that animal control is aware of it and we have to start logging these uh, to make sure, first of all, that no one gets injured and no you know, animals get injured because I think that they're the biggest risk, you know, small cats, dogs. I animals. actually called the health department. I thought they would want the raccoon for rabies testing, but they said no because there was no animal or human exposure. Uh, same thing in the clerk's office if we get any calls, you know, please kind of make a list of that, so, you know. I tend not to call. 
<laughs> All right, Mr. Young. It sounds like it's time for you to shine. <laughs> I don't know if that's shining. Yeah, uh, you, 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 you deserve some, cake, some kudos. It was, uh, it was quite an event. And, nice we, uh, and, and you know what? I, I want to thank the colleagues from the committee, all five of us. Uh, uh, we're there for pretty much the majority of the day, and everyone chipped in wherever they could and did whatever they But, you know, the staff, again, I don't know how else you, you can say, but everyone did a, a yeoman's job. Um, so, you know, we pulled, it, it was quite an event that was way bigger than I think anybody would have anticipated, and um, it went off with little or no issues. So, uh, kudos to everyone in the township. So. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, first, I'd like to. Uh, Say thank you to the clerk's office. Uh, Barb, unfortunately, is home recovering. Rob, make sure you send her love. All right. And uh, we missed her during this past week. Uh, Joanne and Janet have stepped up big time. She's very humble and, and does not really accept praise too well. But uh, you went, you were amazing. And the compliments I received from the people that I hauled all day on my golf cart uh, that dealt with you. In the last two months, I had nothing but praise. So thank you for your professionalism and uh, your pride in this country. Um, Roy, uh, yeah, what can we say about the crew that we had out there all week working? They, uh, I think we had 11 guys working uh, on Saturday, but we uh, they really dedicated themselves last week to cleaning the park up. They did all the decorations in the park. Um, Every entryway had pumpkins and mums and hay bales and corn stalks. The uh, memorial for Amanda uh, was completely decorated also. The stage, every part of it, and uh, the, the park was just, you know, it was impeccable the way that it was done. Uh, one thing I really love to see out of the guys that, you know, a lot of times we see them and there's not a lot of pride or there's kind of a ho-hum attitude, but what they put into this program, the pride, that I saw them walking around with and going one step above every time because I told them if you see something that needs to be done, do it. And they did. And that's what we hope to see, I think, more of uh, out of our crew. But uh, Roy, Johnny Adams, Dwayne, my supervisors that were there, did a phenomenal job, as well as all the guys on the street uh, parking cars, picking up trash giving directions and probably taking a little bit of abuse once in a while, but they really represented this township and I'm proud of them for it. I'd also like to thank the uh, residents of uh, Sunset Acres. Uh, I know it was quite a bit on them. Um, like Rich said, this was a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. I, we estimated we had somewhere around 12,000 people out there, maybe maybe more. Uh, I think it might have been closer to 15. Um, and we took every available parking we could, and we had hardly any problems at all or complaints from any of the neighbors. Uh, there was a few small things, uh, but again, you know, it's a one day event. We're lucky that our roads are out there, our double width roads, and uh, you know, for your patience, uh, for putting up with that for the day, that to put on a great program for this township. You know, again, I just want to say thank you for that. Um, we had somewhere, just a real quick report on it, um, we had, I think, 88 dry, what we call dry vendors, which is your crafters, uh, collectibles, things like that. We had 37 food vendors and 40-some uh, swap meat car park vendors. Uh, we were more than five football fields long just in swap meat things. Uh, we estimated somewhere between seven and 800 street rods. They came in and close to 100 motorcycles on the show. If you go on uh, Pumpkin Run on Facebook or on the township site, we'll have something come up. I've got probably over a thousand pictures I gotta put back up again yet. And uh, and one thing I have to say is we heard nothing but accolades to this township. People that have been to Harry's for 22 years were involved with him and started, came to me and said it was one of the best shows they've ever seen, especially for a first year show. And they pretty much begged us to, if, if Harry does take the show back, that we do our own show, because they will be back and they will support us. Uh, so when you take somebody that's been doing it for 22 years to say that for a first year show. Uh, and then the king himself, Harry, called me yesterday. And uh, 
he does not like to be in the limelight whatsoever. He snuck through there, and I didn't get a chance to even see him Saturday. I think, you know, quite a few guys did, but I didn't. Um, and told me he didn't think we would have pulled this off. He had his doubts. But to hear him say, I'm proud of what we did, and to commend <coughs> Kirk's office, our committee, OEM, everybody that was there, the public works, and to say how easy they were to deal with and how polite and professional they were. That's kind of what I was shooting for when you take somebody that has been a professional of doing this for him to give us those accolades. So, again, kudos to everybody. Uh, we'll do a warm or a uh, cool down meeting uh, next week, everybody that worked it, and try to fix and correct any of the things we have to deal, deal with at this point. I don't think it's major. Uh, signage, more porta potties. Um, very minor things, and also, so people know, the street rod community is a different community than a lot of the other ones. Um, after the, the event was over, I rode my golf cart on every piece of the field where the street bodders and motorcyclists were, and we even had tractor trailers parked out there, the big 1950 Peterbilts and all different ones. Uh, I saw no damage whatsoever, not even a rut. And there was one plastic soda bottle and one candy wrapper left on the ground. And that's out of 800 cars. So they really respected what we have. So, you know, uh, which made me feel a lot more comfortable to try to pull this off one more time. So, hear that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to me yesterday? <laughs> one question, she said. When do we start organizing the next one? A little sooner than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot 349 of days and six hours yeah. and 22 minutes. It, it was a lot of work for the two months that we had to do it, that's for sure. But I think we hit about 95% of where I was hoping to be. But this township hit 100% for uh, what they put into it. So can't thank the employees enough. Perfect. Thank you. And that's a tough act to follow, but I will follow with one thing because I'm not trying to be like the commercials on TV, but I've been asked to remind everyone that our tree lighting, believe it or not, for Christmas, will be at our December 4th meeting uh, at 6.30. Right? Is that right? I got one more. Okay, one more. Go ahead. Uh, our uh, Tucker Hill Merchants Association really uh, endorsed this and, and were there and, and, and helped out with everything and had been set up. Uh, on uh, November the 18th, to Saturday, we have Handmade in America Professional Craft Show at the Community Center, and that will be from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And it's free admission, but they have a lot of great crafters there. It's a good time before the holidays to get out there and, and look for that little unique gift. So if you could, get out and support them also. So, Joanne, would you read the resolutions, please? Number one, Wayne Dennis C. Sharp is a part time employee of the other construction for office for this fire protection subcode official. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Hoggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Sheriff Lumber? Yes. Motion carried. Rescinding the fire authorization to dispose of township property by sale on an online auction website. Move so, the resolution. Second. Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Yes. Certification of cost for being the nuisance on Block 573, Lot 16. Move second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Number four, authorizing the purchase of a 2018 Ford F-150 crew cab, four by two options. For the Chief Financial Officer of the Gulf Funds, the amount of $33,613 from the account entitled Recycling Test Account for such purposes. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Corson? 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 Yes. Mr. Corson?
Person? Yes. 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 Authorizing the reduction of the performance bond for the major subdivision known as Extension of Sea Sales Avenue, 597.5. Do you have the resolution? Second. Paul? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a major subdivision that's been under construction. The contractors completed uh, all the work except the final person paving. Uh, you know, they hold off on doing the final person paving until most of the streets on the or the houses on the street have been completed just so they bring uh, the construction of the homes they don't damage the road. Um, but all the other work has been uh, satisfactorily completed so we can reduce the uh, bond uh, that we need to push it until that work is ready to be done. Okay. And you're good then with everything? Okay. Uh, and then Barbara's checking the numbers this morning. I'm just going to find this here. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hodgins? Yes. Mr. Person? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Rejecting the bids received for West Grad and Department of Improvements. We the resolution. Second. Mr. Hyman. Yes. Mr. Person. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. And and we are going to now move forward and have our own in staff take care of this work, right? There will be a majority of it. There will be a couple of items that will go out and, and receive quotes for uh, to have some contractor do some of the concrete curb and sidewalk work and how to install some of the fencing. Uh, but all the rest of the uh, creating and filling and, and other site improvement work and putting safety servicing and installing the, uh, uh, the other playground and picnic benches and those items all the other works. Number nine, section five, the block six, Move to authorize. Yes. 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 Motion to approve. Second. Yes. 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 Ordinance amending the first subsection of section 3A and the second subsection of section 3E of bond ordinance number 008-2016 of the township buffer in the county of Cape May, New Jersey, filing back on April 25th, 2016, in order to amend the description of the projects. Motion to adopt. No, nope. we have to open up for public hearing yes. first. So, does anyone have a question before I open it to the public? Okay, so is, is there anyone in the public that would like to address this ordinance, um, 14, uh, 2017? Um, and Barbara, you want to explain what this ordinance is, please? Um, this is amending our 2016 bond ordinance um, to allow for um, an additional uh, vehicle for our construction office and also uh, to amend the, uh, the section uh, in the bond to remove uh, the purchase of uh, OEM equipment that we determined was not needed. Okay. So we've heard a uh, summary of what this ordinance addresses. Would anyone from the public like to address that? Okay. It, it appears that there's no one in the public that um, wants to uh, testify, so I'm going to close the public portion and come back to the Township Committee to entertain a motion for adoption. A uh, motion for adoption. Second. Did you have something to add? No. Do you want to call the roll, please? Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Person? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Are the proceedings specific with the states? Yes, they're listed on the I mean, the historical society uses buildings, don't they? They use the upstairs. I didn't know about that. They were trying to use. Okay. They did ask if um, we could request that they could remove a rail car and remove the speaker shed. And we have this um, certificate of insurance and things that yes. we require and yeah, have any in place. Yes. Yeah. It'll be part of this part of the ordinance or sort of requirements. I guess he's going to have a Santa Claus Roman Bridge one. I assume that's what it is. 
you know, it says that they're only operating the during the course of the day, the passengers are only at, uh, uh, at the station to board the cross trains. Hey, gentlemen, what's your, what's your, uh, I'd like to make a motion with Grant Frugal. Second. Mr. Hines? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Would you call the roll? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. 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 Uh, there is only one report, uh, Division of EMS. That report will be available tomorrow morning upon request of the clerk's office, but I'll make a motion to accept that report. Second. Yes. 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 So at this time, um, I'll open it up. Uh, if, if anyone from the public would like to address the council committee, now is the time to do it. Please come up to the lecture and um, state your name and your address and your reason for uh, uh, coming forth before the uh, Township Committee. Yes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Donald Renier. I live at 9 Putnam Avenue, Strathmere. Full-time, year-round resident, happy to say. You uh, adopted a resolution uh, earlier this evening, number five, I think, on your agenda regarding uh, Lock uh, 829, Lot 4.01, I believe. Uh, I feel a little bit like the guy who kind of locking the barn door after the horses have gone, so I'm not sure that uh, my remarks will have any real impact, but uh, I came here a few years ago, I think it was like three years ago, with an almost identical resolution, the same lot, with the same concerns about this resolution. Uh, I mentioned back then that it, it concerned me because the township is certifying that this project meets all of its ordinances uh, and is in compliance with all of them, and I'm not sure that that's an accurate representation of certification. And I had a couple questions, if I could. Maybe Mr. Dietrich could help me out. Um, I mean, for example, the uh, there, I believe you have an ordinance that regulates the construction of the septic systems that is actually related to the county, but you've adopted, you require, for example, in your construction office that you have to be in compliance with the county rules and regulations for septic. And that's what they're applying for is the provisions that would govern that. The certification work uh, certifies that it essentially meets all the zoning requirements. I'm a little hard of hearing. Could you? That the project meets all the zoning requirements of the tax. If there's a proposed project, the, the structure that they're proposing meets is a permitted structure within the zone and that it meets all the required setbacks <laughs> as far as front yard setback, side yard setback, and rear yard setback. Coverage, coverage. So since it meets all of those requirements of what they're going to propose, that's what we're certifying. But in terms of the septic uh, system aspects, because, for example, the county, and I thought through as a pass-through resolution or pass-through ordinance that you have requiring county health department approval, that there, there is a distance requirement between septic systems of 50 feet, which this fails to comply with. That's what they're applying for. The, the, the treatment works approval. Is, a, is an application and a permit that you receive from the Department of Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. And what they're applying for is to deviate from those standards from the state code. It's actually the state code uh, that they want to deviate from. <coughs> this is the mechanism in which they have to deviate from that. So, so Paul, we're not certifying anything at what we just voted on. It's just to say that they meet side yard, rear yard setbacks, and now it's up to the county Correct. to make a decision. We, we have not state. approved Correct. the state. state and then the county. Right. There's no endorsement from the township that the septic requirements is, that, that they're applying to, to, to deviate from those standards, that the township is acknowledging that they meet the standards for the septic regulations or that we endorse the septic regulations. All that we are certifying is that the structure is permitted to be there and that it meets the township's requirements. Mm -hmm. We get one of these for almost any building 
strategy. I know, and that's what was mentioned the last time I was here, and I understand that, that point of view, but if, if you're not doing something that's maybe in, either in the township's interest or actually correct legally, then the fact that you've been doing it that way I don't think is, you know, the answer. Correct. I'm sorry, it's not correct legally. This is what they're asking for. Does this conform to our zoning ordinance? And does. We don't have any other ordinance that prohibits it. The section that you're citing, as Mr. Dietrich explained, deals with uh, the fact that they have to get this approval. Mm -hmm. So it would be circular to say, well, they don't have this approval, they're asking for it, and therefore, because they don't have this approval, we're going to say they don't comply. Mm -hmm. That would be sort of the reason it doesn't make sense. Right. I, I sort of understand that. I, uh, but, for example, you really don't know if the, that the house is going to comply with the height requirements or any of those things when you don't really have a plan. They have presented to the township a plan that says they will meet all the, all the mm. requirements. For okay. The well, I won't belabor that point. I, I would say that it seems to me that when I read the certification, it's a little broader than just the zoning or the, the actual structure. I think it's a much broader certification that you're certifying to. And um, un unfortunately, I didn't bring that piece of paper. But I, I also wanted to just have a couple more remarks because um, one of my concerns as the adjacent property owner is the, um, the walls of this proposed uh, septic bed is adjacent to my property only 10 feet away. And um, one of the problems this project had and got it, it was denied up in Trenton the last time it was sent because there was not enough room for them to make repairs. They only had six foot on each side based on the side yard requirements. And they couldn't get the equipment in there if there was a, if there was a failure in their septic system. And so if it did fail, I would probably bear the point of that failure. And for example, we had a house right next to that, as you can see in the Hurricane Sandy, that just destroyed the, the septic system. So it's not some wild hypothetical that I'm talking about. It's something that has is real concern to me and my and my other neighbors. And I wanted to raise that issue with you. That would be a comment you should address to the uh, the Department of Environmental Protection. I did get copies. The clerk was very helpful in getting us copies of the application. Uh, we, there, was, there has been long-standing litigation in this project. It goes back about 10 years. Uh, and so that was one of my concerns. I certainly wouldn't want the township to get involved with, you know, in, in somehow in the middle of any of the litigation that may or may not occur. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Robert Young from uh, 224 Marshall Road in Tuckahoe. Uh, I just wanted to say um, I wanted to thank uh, the Township Committee, especially Hobie, for the opportunity to work uh, on Saturday at the uh, Pumpkin Run. It was, it was a great experience, and I uh, appreciate the overtime, the extra hours, and all it was outstanding. And uh, I really wanted to thank, what I, what I, the main thing I came for was um, I really wanted to thank uh, all the volunteers that went out there and helped. There was a lot of people that were out there getting paid, and, and that was great, and you know we really appreciate it. But at the same time, there was a whole bunch of people out there that weren't getting paid. And I specifically, uh, specifically got the privilege to uh, work with uh, a couple of young uh, men and women that were in the Cape May County uh, Police Explorers, uh, and I talked to a couple of them, and there were a couple of them were, were young, you know, like ninth, tenth graders. And uh, I just wanted to commend them on a great job. I mean, they did an awesome job. And I know we were all young high school kids at one time, and there's probably a hundred other things we can think of to do rather than stand in the middle of the field and tell cars where to park on Saturday afternoon. And they came out there and did it. And I know, uh, I think it was Joanne's uh, son that was out there, and he did a great job. And uh, I would just want to make a recommendation. I don't know if there's any way we can do this. Um, if the township could reach out to them and let them know, you know, I don't know if we could send them a gift card or a card or something and say that we really appreciate the help and what a great job they did. And uh, they deserve to be commended for it. You know, the young, young kids to be out there and to work and do such the great job that they did. It's really appreciated. That's a program just want to say that. It's actually a fantastic program. Yeah, yeah, those, those kids did a great job, and I just wanted to thank them. You know, they did, it was an awesome, uh, yeah. well, great Mr. job on their part. I just had a conversation he's working on actually getting um, the T-shirts that have uh, you know, memorialized the event, and we passed them out to the volunteers and some of the other people that, that work with the 
the event. So and I knew I I knew I'd forget somebody. So thanks for bringing up the volunteers because without them, then we had. Uh, quite a variety. Yeah, and I mean, they helped on Fourth of July too, and they did a great job. And there's, I mean, like like I said, them kids are not getting paid. They're out there in high school, you know, volunteering their time. And uh, you tell them, you ask them to do something, say, hey, stand here, tell the cars to go this way or whatever, tell them to park here. Yes, sir. You know, I asked them the, well, a couple times, I asked them they want to take a break. No, no, we're good. We don't need anything. We're good. We want to stay here and keep working. We don't want to stop. So, I mean, just I want to say what a great job they did. Thanks for your time. So Anyone else? Now we got father after son. Yep. Uh, Robert Young, 224 Marshall Road. I got, I'm last on all this to everybody else. So I just came tonight. I went to the pumpkin run. It was great. It was great. Anybody didn't get it, they really missed it. And I wanted to compliment everybody on the job they did because it was amazing to deal with that many people and you never did it before and have things go. In my eyes, as smooth as looked pretty smooth to me. I'm sure there was a few problems, there always is, but you know, you guys did a great job. That's why I came tonight. But there was so much said, I wouldn't have to be in here. Everybody said it already. So. <laughs> anyway, that's why I came. Thank you. And we also forgot to thank our uh, KD security, who did a phenomenal job uh, escorting people with money and, and standing by our girls to make sure that they were safe. So they did a phenomenal job. And they were funny on top of it, so that was good. <laughs> Anyone else? Now it's time to address the Township Committee. Okay, appears we have no other no further comments, so I'm going to close the public uh, portion of the meeting and turn it over to Mr. Coggins to uh, make a motion to go to executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Contract negotiation with the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. I also include my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be discussed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a safe drive home and enjoy the rest of the evening.